Hello, my name is Caden. This is Castle Tulu Journal Defense Network. Um, we've been doing a lot of shotgun stuff, and we had a very a respectful uh, person with a, a different point of view, and I want to go over his stuff um, a little. I, I won't announce who, uh, who he is, but he, he made comments in um, uh, one of the shotgun videos, and we were talking about cross-loading, and cross-loading or progressive uh, loading, and just to for people who don't know what that is, is in a shotgun, you're going to have the ability to have different... Uh, shot shells of different uh, styles or calibers, if you will. You may have a non-lethal, you may have some bird shot, buck shot, um, anything in between, a slug, and then you can progressively become whatever you want. You can start off with a non-lethal round and, and on your seventh shot it could be a, a slug and you can have a very specialized in that area. And what people try to do with that is that they try to modify um, lethal force where they, like in the state of California, people actually think that the state of California, you have to retreat and you have to give them a chance to, to surrender. And that's just not the case. Again, I am not a lawyer. I don't pretend to be. This is not legal advice, but it is my understanding is that California has a modified castle doctrine. Okay. And what that really means is if someone is trying to break through your door at the, the specific, uh, specific time, you and you are afraid, um, for your life or great bodily harm, you can use lethal force to stop the threat. Okay. There is a little caveat to that is if you recognize it, uh, um, the person who's breaking into your home being a family member or a neighbor kid, if you recognize a relationship with you, um, you do not have the right to, to use lethal force at that point. However, once the people do break in, and now that you are fearing for your life or great bodily harm or another one in your family, then you can use a lethal force. So um, for the people who do the progressive loading because of that scenario, um, it doesn't exist. You do not need to uh, specialize your your rounds coming out of your shotgun for that fashion. The second reason why people use progressive loading or or cross loading is for over penetration. Um, over penetration is always a consideration, but what I would implore you to do is read anything by Masad Ayub on the topic. And basically, what he is suggesting is that you, with a, a shotgun, you are defending a choke point, a hallway, a staircase, um, a door frame and um, you are in a static position where you know where the lead is flying. Now, people will say that the double lead buck will, you know, go through a lot of things. And what Masada Ayub does is that he wants you to be in a static position so you know what areas you're going to be defending and you know what the, the direction of lead is going to be. Masab Ayub, um, he's a little bit older and he suggests um, bookshelves. You know, today bookshelves are not very uh, prevalent, but you get the idea where it's going to be tougher for that uh, double lot to over penetrate um, out the house and kill family members and create mayhem. And that's what they're, they're really trying uh, to consider. Um, what he what he has done is after he listened to um, my uh, video on shotguns that shotguns suck for home defense not so fast. Um, very respectful. You haven't talked me out of progressive loading. I have a non-lethal two uh, seven and a half bird and then three number one buck. Uh, side saddle has number one slugs. Yes, there may be more than one attacker. Agreed. No argument. However, I absolutely need to give them a chance to, to surrender here in California in addition to the number of thin walls in my home that double lot will, will um, go through like Kleenex. Uh, seven and a half and number one will also penetrate, but not as far. Absolutely true. And actually, um, number one is a very good round. Even a number four buck is a very good round for self-defense. And that's how you can limit that. But, you know, um, my argument always with, with a progressive loader, if, like, he has a non-lethal round, uh, we'll talk about the non-lethal round first. Um, the non-lethal round is the first one that is coming out of his gun. And I've had someone else with the same argument. He, the reason he has a, a bean bag coming out or a rubber bullet is if um, a neighbor comes through the door and he accidentally shoot him. Well, my argument with him and me is, well, why, are you sh why did you recognize that you're shooting a neighbor? Um, that scenario um, shouldn't happen. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you should never have gotten there in the first place. But 
What lethal rounds actually do, and they are good for a very specific use. They are good for police departments. They're good for police departments. What is going to happen is you're going to have one or a couple of guys that are going to have non-lethal rounds, and they're going to try to stun the guy so everyone can swarm um, and, and, and take a, a hold of him before he gets his facilities back together. Notice what I said is that other officers have the, uh, the option of lethal force if the non-lethal force doesn't take the person out of the fight. Again, what they're trying to do is hit the individual, knock them on the butt, disorient them, and then flood them and secure them. When you're the only person in the house, the non-lethal round just doesn't make sense because if you recognize that you're shooting your neighbor, well, don't shoot your neighbor. Recognize who you're shooting first and, do, and go from there. Um, you cannot um, use a non-lethal round for a mistake, okay, because that is actually going to give, again, two to five people are storming your home with quick and overwhelming force. If you don't take the first one out of the, the, the fight, and then you go to the next one, and then the, the and then the first one gets back his facilities and goes after you, well, again, you're only in, in a home environment. You're really only dealing with 15, 20 feet on the outside, and how fast can a bad guy run um, in one and a half seconds? That's 21 feet. So if you take, if you try to take someone out with a non-lethal round, and then you go for birdshot in the second round, and then the other guy has his facilities and he's coming back at you, all that energy that you've already done um, with the non-lethal round is good for not nothing. You're back at square one. And then again with a ballistic gel test, you're not exactly sure if you took the second guy out of the fight. Who knows where the third, fourth, and fifth guy are at, and you have done nothing with two rounds out of your um, two rounds out of your shotgun. Um, the one, the other thing that I have a problem with uh, with progressive loading is that um, you know this guy is is not um, uh, typical of what uh, they'll have. He goes up to uh, uh, a non-lethal round, two seven and a half bird, and then uh, three number one buck. Um, you know, that's more that's more responsible if you do have the idea of overpenetration um, is, is an argument. So he is following his own advice, and it's better than a lot of people who, who tell me is that they'll have like a non-lethal uh, two-bird shot and end up with buckshot and um, um, a slug. And my theory is that if, if you have a non-lethal, if you have non-lethal, let's just say it's a five-shot, non-lethal birdshot birdshot buck slug why is it okay for buck to come out in the fourth position but not come out in the first position because if you use buck in the first position where the non-lethal round is he more than likely is going to be taken out of the fight okay so if you are rationalizing um i i, I love the the number one buck um number one and number four um, does um, a very, 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 very good job. Um, I, I, I do, I do like it um, for that purpose. But even though number one buck is going to be just, uh, pretty devastating, it's not going to be as devastating as a, a double odd. But again, if number one buck in his, uh, if number one buck is okay for three, four, five, why isn't it okay for one? If he had number one in the non-lethal position, he may not even need to get to number three where he is having the more um, chance of overpenetration. So again, read a Masad Ayub uh, about um, a defending a choke point and direction of travel, uh, using barriers to stop the overpenetration. Also for the people in California, I strongly recommend this book, How to Own a Gun and Stay Out of Jail um, in California, the 2012 edition, 2013. Um, it usually comes out in May or so. 2013 and May of 2013, I recommend it. There is a lot of theory, there is a lot of myth out there about California law. The app, the practical application of California law is middle of the road. Um, like I'm out here in Minnesota right now, I prefer the, the application of California law compared to the four pillar law here in Minnesota. Um, it's um, Minnesota is much more extreme than, than California. Again, uh, progressive loading, uh, cross loading, I think is uh, uh, something that I agreed with 20 years ago. It made sense to me 20 years ago. But again, the more you learn, uh, the more you realize that what you think you know 20 years ago 
may not make sense today because you're always learning, growing, and improving. Again, what made sense what made sense six months ago may seem silly today. My name is Caden. This is Castle Tulage, your home defense network. I hope this helped.